Hi everybody, Susan here. My name is Susan Webster. I'm an independent demonstrator and I live in Marston, New York. So I'm going to be your fourth demo for our day of our Stampathon. So I hope you're joining me. I know some of you are on the West Coast. You're probably getting ready to have your lunch while you watch me demo. And some of you are here on the East Coast with me. So it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So we've had a full day already. So I hope you're ready for some fun. I'm going to do some simple stamping cards using the Island Vibes stamp set. And I hope you enjoy them. And at the end, I will post the tutorial um, of all the products I've used. So don't worry about taking notes. The video will be here and the directions will be posted later. All right, give me a second while I switch down my camera and get everything focused. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see, how are we on picture? I always have to check all these technical things, right? Make sure everyone can see what I'm doing. Am I still broadcasting? I'm still broadcasting. All right, well, it looks like I'm in there, so it should work for all of us. So this is how I do uh, my demonstration. So I have the Island Vibes stamp set. This is one of the free stamp sets you can earn during celebration. Okay, it's the one right inside the cover of our brochure here. So it's got three stamps. As you can see, it's got the palm fronds, the pineapple, and this little, I think it's like a little rubber tree plant that remind me of like Laverne and Shirley. So that's what I'm calling it, the rubber tree plant. So I'm going to show some different techniques for you on using this really simple stamp set, right? Just three images. And I'm going to pair mine with the Biggest Wish sentiment set. I really like this nice, clean and simple sentiment set. I like that they're big and bold, but you can also have the loopy signature kind of lettering as well. And then I'm going to use my Stitch So Sweetly dies for most of my samples I'm going to show you. Um, they are one of my favorites, and I really like these um, scalloped rectangles. So those are the ones I'm using today. So I've done all my die cutting ahead of time, so we don't have to deal with those. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside, and we'll just get started. Okay, so I'm gonna do some simple stamping techniques with you. I found that a lot of my customers think that they need to go over the top on a card, and really you can keep them very simple um, and use some fun techniques to create some really amazing cards. So I'm using Bumblebee for my color. I'm gonna use the pineapple set stamp for my image. I've got Bumblebee for my cardstock and the Whisper White for my pair. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp repetitive. So repetitive stamping with my ink and my stamp. And I'm going to create a background. Now you're going to see, I'm going to go all around my paper and I'm going to keep the body of the pineapple in this center section. Because you can see from the sample, I'm going to cover it up. But what I'm creating is a textured background with just my one image kind of like in a sunburst pattern and I'm just going around and I'm not worried about whether it's on the cardstock or off the cardstock it creates that active edge so lots of texture active edge so there's my nice simple background okay we'll put that on the card in just a minute and then my stitch so sweetly tag I'm just going to stamp the pineapple nice and clean I hope one time nice and easy and then I'm going to use my black ink my memento ink and bring in my stamp that says hello I'm just going to ink that up and I'm going right over that pineapple just a little bit kind of bring everything together so nice simple stamping right and then it goes together super quick so I'm going to add a piece of the gingham bumblebee ribbon and this is my cheater bow so I take two pieces of ribbon the first one I'm gonna wrap and then I'm gonna cheat with dimensionals so watch this I'm gonna wrap it around the back I'm gonna have a little edge of my dimensional right the edge and I'm just gonna put that down underneath there and then I'm bringing this one down 
this side, again, using that edge, all right, and there to hold that ribbon down. And then I'll just add a couple more to the back. Easy peasy. Peel off all those backers. Right? And then that becomes the front of our card. So if I can get that on there, centered. So there's that. Then we just have our sentiment label that we stamped. I'm just going to add a few back there. Love my dimensionals. Makes cards go together really easy. Okay. Shift that up just a little. Put this down. And then here's my cheater bow. So I just slide this under, right? I didn't adhere the front of that ribbon. It's just loose. And then I just tie a simple knot. Whoop, if I can get my finger to do it. Let's see. There we go. My simple knot. And then just bring up your ends and give them a quick snip together and it'll make them nice and even. So, pretty simple, right? Not too bad. Okay, so that was card number one. Ready to do another one? All right, this time we're going to do balmy blue and I'm going to use that rubber tree plant as my main image. So I'm bringing that in. Now, this time, I'm actually going to be doing a technique um, that a lot of people forget about, and it's a watercolor wash. It's a really simple technique, and that's how I'm going to do the tag. Now, I've done one ahead of time because you're going to see that I have to let it dry. But if I bring in my balmy blue ink, and it's over here, bring in my balmy blue ink, and I'm just going to squeeze my pad to kind of get a little bit of ink in the cover. If that doesn't work for you, you can always just do a little drop of ink from your reinker. So this time I've cut this on watercolor paper. They call it Fluid 100 now. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of water in the end of my brush. So first I just kind of paint my paper. That just loosens up the fibers a little bit, okay? Then I come over and I grab some ink. I can swish it around, make it lighter, darker. And then I just come back and I'm washing the color onto the paper, watercolor wash, right? A nice, easy, simple technique to add a little bit of color without having like a solid color piece of cardstock. And it kind of gives you that fun, light textured background. And if you can see, I am coloring inside my stitched edge. So I'm actually gonna have a little bit of a frame that's the white color while my inside is this balmy blue, washed out balmy blue. Now, the trick with this watercolor wash is you have to let it dry. So I've let one dry I did ahead of time. And a lot of times as I'm letting it dry, it'll curve up like this. So sometimes I even will just put my block down on top of it to flatten it. Okay, but I'm gonna set this one aside. I use that for another card. So this one is dry and as you can see, it's nice and flat again, right? All right, so that's gonna be our tag. But we need to do our background stamping. So this time I'm going to use Versamark. Versamark is a great clear ink, um, and it gives you a watermark. Uh, Michelle used it in the last video when she was embossing. It's also the ink we use for embossing. But I'm just going to stamp the background with my Versamark, and I'm doing that same repetitive stamping, so the same kind of technique. But this time I'm going to do it, or I'm going to try to do it, kind of in stripes, okay? Oh, and mine is very dirty. All right, here we go. We'll see how this turns out. So I'm just stamping my tree and I'm gonna offset my pattern. So my flowered part is gonna be next to the potted part. So it's kind of offset. So it's like stamping your own background paper. We have beautiful background paper, pattern paper, but you can stamp your own. So just going to let's see, move this one here, kind of offsetting these images. And easy peasy, we have our background image for this card. All right, so there's our background. Here's our tag, and now we just got to put our um, picture on there, right? So now I'm going to take that same stamp. 
this time I'm going to color it with our markers. So if you see sometimes um, on our samples, I think there's one in the brochure, where the image has two different colors, but you're like, wait, it's one stamp. How do we get it with two different colors? Well, one way to do it is to just color your stamp with our markers. Okay. So this time I'm using Pacific Blue for my pot because I wanted kind of a two-tone blue happening. So there's my pot. And then I'm going to flip it over so I can try to keep the green just on the stem and the leaves. All right, so here's my plant part. See if I can get enough ink on there. Sometimes I spritz the stamp, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to press it right into our watercolor paper this time. I am going to bring my chamois in, and though, and clean off the edge of the stamp because it's a little bit messy. I'll try not to get an overstamped image. So, clean up that stamp a little bit so I'm happy with my result. Okay, so I'm going to stamp directly on my watercolor paper, and sometimes I just hold it maybe for an extra second or two just to make sure that um, the ink transfers over. To that watercolor paper since it's a dry stamp in this case it's not a wet image okay so now we're just going to add our sentiment so this time i'm going to stamp friend in the balmy blue so that's the color of our card and the color i did in the wash all right my balmy blue so there's that and then i'm going to bring in my pacific point marker and ink up my hello word again if you have your ink pad you could do it with the ink pad but if you don't have all of our ink pads your colors on your markers will do the trick just color your stamp with the hello For some reason i don't feel like i'm getting very good coverage with my marker the way it always goes when you're demonstrating. Let's see, I'll do some tapping instead of brushing. Get my ink on there. So what do you think guys? Have you used these techniques lately or have you been doing all the fancy ones? Sometimes simple techniques are just as much fun. All right, I think I have enough ink on there. So, huff it a little. I'm going to stamp this above my friend. Hope I get good results here. I got decent results. Okay. So this one, I'm just going to add the dimensionals and then pop that right up on my single layer card. So, you know, we love doing our die cuts and our embellishing and our dry embossing, but sometimes just simple stamping is fun too. All right. Put that on. There's card number two. Are we having fun? All right, cruising right along. I've got another one. Okay, this one, after I played with this stamp for a while, I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can stamp and get a prefabbed border. And I can. So I'm now going to switch over to the palm fronds here. I'm using Garden Green for this one. And if you've noticed, I like to do monochromatic stuff. So I'm using green ink and green cardstock that matches. Moving some stuff out of my way here. All right, so this one, I've got the garden green ink and I got my stamp. So something cool about this stamp, let me see, I hope we can see, is it's got this 90 degree angle in it, right? Which our cards are 90 degree angles. So it's kind of like a preset border. Okay, so that was my thought. So I'm going to um, ink my stamp this way because I found, now maybe it's my stamp pad is too inky, but I found when I pressed my stamp down to this ink pad, I ended up with a huge ring around it, which I did not want. So sometimes it's easier to stamp images like I just showed you, pressing the ink to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up, I'm going to line up my image with the corner of the cardstock. All right, so I'm going to use my grid paper to help me keep everything square. And then I'm going to line up the 
edge of the rubber, not the image, the rubber, with the edge of my cardstock, and I can see through my block, so I've got that going for me. And I'm just going to press that down. And see, I've got that prefabbed border, which is kind of cool. Now, I'm going to repeat, same thing in the opposite corner. So again, use that cardstock, use your grid paper, line up your cardstock, line up your stamp, press. Easy peasy, right? Isn't that cool? I thought that was cool. So I had to share it. Thought that was cool. Okay, so this time I'm going to use the Big Hello. Same stamp set. Big Hello. I'm just going to put it right here in the middle. And I'm going to use the Small Friend. Just like that. Okay. And then that's just going to go onto my card base. Right? No problem. This one I'm not going to pop up at Inventionals, and this is why my husband, who loves to chime in on my cards, loves, right, with quotation marks, he actually does enjoy everything I do, but, you know, when I say, hey, honey, what do you think of this card? And then he's like, okay, is this a trick question? Am I supposed to love it or hate it? Um, he actually came up with an idea. So I'm pressing that down, and his idea was to go double on the fronds. So I said, okay, well, I'll demonstrate it. We'll see you what kind of comments we get. So I've already stamped and fussy cut out two sets of these palm fronds. And I am going to pop these up on dimensionals. And then we're going to apply them to our card. And he said, now that we've made our border, if we don't like it, just add your palm fronds to the corners. And this would be a great way if you didn't quite get them where you wanted them to be cover them up so you not have to waste the paper or flip it over and try again. He says add them to the two corners and make them three-dimensional. So we'll do one with and one without. You leave me a comment to which way you think it goes better, right? Do you like the nice and flat one layer or do you like the popped up, the popped up fronds? So I wish I could see all your comments. My, my system is not showing me the comments. So I will have to go back and look at them all, but there we go. All right, so now I've got a fourth card. So this is kind of a variation on the theme of this green with our fronds. So I've already die cut um, a finished one, so I won't have to do that, but I'm gonna show you all the steps that I took to make this card. Okay, so this time I started, I think it's three and a half, yeah, it's three and a half by five piece of Whisper White. And I'm using that same stamp, but this time I'm going to stamp all the way around to create kind of a full imaged um, rectangle. Okay. So I'm not too fussy as far as where it all ends up. It's going to overlap a little bit. And I'm just going to turn my cardstock and go again. I mean, you could even just do two. That's kind of cool. Just do two sides. I'm going to go all the way around for this one. And I'm not worried about being in a little bit because I am going to die cut it. Okay, so that's how I stamped my background. Okay, so kind of all the way around. Then I took it to my cutting machine with my die, all right? And I cut out the die, the frame. So I end up with this piece, right? Kind of fun. Kind of fun, I thought. I like all that green. So I've got my label. And then I just stamp my rubber tree plant, right? My lovely rubber tree plant that I like so much. I'm just going to stamp that like that. And you're going to use your paper snips, right? And you'll snip that out. So we got that. Then I cleaned off my stamp already and I would stamp it with the yellow. And this one, I'm just gonna cut out and we're just gonna paper piece the two parts together. So previously we did it with the markers, right? Where we colored the two colors on there and then stamped it. 
but if you prefer, and you're going to be fussy cutting anyway, you can stamp it in two colors and then paper piece it together. So just put a little bit of piece of here and flip that over and I go right over the top. So now I've got a different colored pot for my rubber tree plant, right? And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment, same as the last one. Nice and easy. I love the way they can overlap and you can see everything. Okay? And then we're just going to put it together. So I bring in my card base. I don't want too many layers of dimensional, so I'm going to use my liquid adhesive for this piece. So kind of my cropped down die cut background. All right? And then I've got my tag. All right, and you could leave it just like that, but if you want to go one step further and make your own little embellishment here, you just go ahead and pop up your plant and add that for a little fun. And you've got a cute Hello Friend card to go, right? All right, so, so far we've done all these monochromatic kind of cards, right? Well, the next one I have it's a little bit crazy. My husband was like, really? You're going to demonstrate this card? And I am because it was just fun. Look at this card. So I'm not monochromatic this time, right? I'm using lots of fun colors and I'm using one layer of cardstock. Just trying to clean everything off here for a minute. Okay. So this time I'm using four different colors. My husband's like, you never use that many colors. Well, I am now. So I'm using polished pink, one of our new ink colors. I'm using Calypso Coral, because I thought that was very islandish for the feel of the island. I'm using Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to use the Bumblebee Yellow again. Okay? All right. So I'm starting with my uh, basic white cardstock. And I've got my pineapple, which I'm going to clean off because at the moment it's yellow and I don't want to start with yellow. I want to start with my Bermuda Bay. So this one I'm going to have to clean between my stampings, but it's worth it. So here we go. Okay, first trick is I am stamping on the diagonal, right? So use the grid paper and turn your card base to be kind of the angle you want. Okay. So I'm going to start with my Bermuda Bay. So I'm inking up my stamp, and I'm going to stamp it over here, and I'm stamping it so I have a very active edge, right? Came right off the paper, very active edge. All right, so now I'm going to clean. So now I'm going to go to my polished pink, all right? And I'm going to put it right there next to it, all right? Clean, and then I'm going to go to my Calypso Coral, come right down below it. So again, this active edge, repetitive stamping, only this time we're changing up the color. All right, so this time I'm going to go back to my Bermuda, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it right here in the center of my card, kind of where that one is. And that's because it's going to end up behind my sentiment, and that way I'll have the other colors showing. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp my bumblebee above and below. So I'm going to go below and I'm going to go above. Just fill in that whole card with this repeated image with these fun colors. Now the next one I kind of broke my rule. Instead of going pink next to pink, I'm going to put the Calypso Coral there because I really wanted it to be shown as another color. At first, my husband was like, wait, is that just three colors? And I said, no, it's four colors. And he had to look really close for the difference. So I want to make sure that I kind of showcase all the color up there. All right, another pink. And then we're just going to finish it off on the opposite end. Now here, we may differ, you and I. I went with the yellow, right? Because I already had two blues and only the yellow kind of on the top and bottom. So I'm just going to go with yellow again. All right, cool? I think it's cool. All right, so 
that's how I stamped on my diagonal to do my single layer card. And then we're just going to come in and make our tag. Here to go. Here's our tag. So I'm going to go back to the bumblebee and the black. But you could, actually, maybe I'll use the Bermuda. We'll see. All right. So first I'm stamping my friend in there. All right. Good old happy bell I'm going to have to send off to my my friends this month after all these cards. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try it with the Bermuda with the hello. We'll see how it goes. So, right there. That's okay. You can live with that. All right. And then the only piece if I need is some dimensionals. And I'm just going to go with my edge because I use all of my dimensionals all the way around. And pop that on my card. So, I really wish I could see your comments, guys, but I can't. So, I'll have to go back and read them. So, let me know what you think of these fun cards. I know everybody else is kind of giving you, like, one really fancy special die cut or special fold. And I just wanted to do some simple stamping and kind of show you how you can use a repeated technique in different colors with simple stamps. And make some fun cards. So these are the ones we just made. Right? Kind of the whole idea. And then I just have a couple other samples, kind of um variations on a theme. So show you those up a little bit. So variations on a theme. I have another garden green one here. This one I cut down to note size, so it's three and a half by five when it's folded. And I went again with that same uh, background like I have in this one, right? Same background, but this one's cut down with a, just the rectangle. And then this time I used that same Stitch So Sweetly die, but I stamped the leaf in there once and just the hello. So that's a nice cute little um, note card, same idea. And then this one, I have the two colors, the bumblebee and the garden green. And so I stamped my three and a half by five, but instead of die cutting it, I just left it, just left it, the rectangle. Um, I think I trimmed the edges because I missed a little bit. So I trimmed it down a little bit. And then I just mounted that up on the two layers of coordinating cardstock, stamped my sentiment and did that same uh, trick with stamping the pot and the flower and cutting it over, uh, putting it over each other, paper piecing. So that's kind of a fun one there. And then I have one other one. This one actually uses the DSP from the Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series paper, which you can also get as a celebration item. And same idea, same tag. And then this time I colored the pineapple with my two colors and die cut, not die cut. I fussy cut that with my paper snips and put that on there as a fun embellishment. So that's it. I had a lot of fun creating these for today. I hope you're enjoying all of our demonstrations and that you uh, are either going to be with us all day or come back and see the ones that you miss. That's why we're kind of doing all day and they'll be here for you. So um, let us know what you think and I hope that you're having a great day enjoying our stamping. All right, everybody. I will uh, see you on the flip side. All right. Bye-bye.